What's up, guys? It's Ben Pollock. I have a new mic, so hopefully my sound quality is a little bit better. I'm going to use that new mic to talk about something that's really important for squatting technique, and that's forward knee displacement. Now, I think this is a bit of a misunderstood topic, and I think it's misunderstood because forward knee displacement, or the right amount of forward knee displacement, is something that's very individual. It's going to be based on your body type, your leverages, but also your strongest muscle groups, right? When it comes to forward knee displacement, you're really talking about the balance between your quads and your posterior chain. And when I say forward knee displacement, I'm just talking about the amount that your knees travel forward from their starting position when they're locked out, right? Whether they're, you know, more or less your shins are upright, which would be no forward knee displacement versus you push your knees way forward over your toes like an Olympic lifter would and you have a great deal of forward knee displacement. The further forward your knees go, the more that you're going to engage the quads. The further upright that your shins are, the more you're going to engage the posterior chain, right? That's the lower back, the hamstrings, and the glutes. If you look at top-level lifters, you can find ones that run the gamut between no forward knee displacement at all and a ton of forward knee displacement. And so it can be really confusing if you're just starting out and trying to decipher what's the right technique for me. Okay, so, so what do I do? So I want to break that down, and we're going to use me as an example, all right? And I want to show you guys some nuances that you might look at to determine, okay, how much forward knee displacement do I need in my own squat, all right? So let's get started. So we're going to start by taking a look at my most recent squats where I'm not doing a great job of pushing my knees far enough forward. And I attribute that to the fact that my squat technique is pretty rusty after doing all that bodybuilding training. But let's see what happens when I'm squatting down and I'm not getting enough forward knee displacement. Watch my hips, right, as I descend. Look how far behind my shoulders they are. That's a good bit far behind. And look how much I'm cutting depth. I'm, I'm basically only getting my hamstrings to parallel. Now, it does improve a little bit as the set goes on. And obviously, you know, I have a lot of strength in that position because I am a posterior dominant lifter. But that's really not the most important thing if you're training for a competition, right? The most important thing is that you're moving the weight, moving as much weight as you can, adhering to competition standards. So the solution is not to change your technique all that much. It's just to push the knees a little bit further forward. And now we're going to go back to an older set. This was prepped for the U.S. Open where I was doing some box squats, which typically you think of, right, as a more posterior chain dominant exercise. But watch how much further my knees travel forward, all right? You're going to watch the position of my knees relative to my toes. And then look how much more upright I am, how much closer my hips stay to my shoulders, and how much deeper I'm able to go, still with a lot of strength out of the hole. The only difference there is the amount of forward knee displacement. Okay, so that should show you that it's a very important topic. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm using wraps here, so I'm getting that extra strength from for knee extension, right, which is the same as, you know, activating your quads. Those are both going to extend the knees. And so that's why it's even more important that I really get that for knee displacement if I want to take advantage of that. Let's also take a look at how it affects depth. I like to start out with a very drastic example, right? This is a stiff-legged good morning, but you could see where I barely unlock my knees. Even though the bar is traveling a great deal, my hips are going nowhere. They're way far behind my shoulders, and obviously that's not what you want. So that's a great example of seeing how forward knee displacement will affect your depth as well as your strength, right? I think that should be pretty clear. Um, but I do want to take a second to show you guys how to find the right amount of forward knee displacement. And I think the easiest way is to just look at your bar path. All right. So here's an example from the side. If you are properly balancing your forward knee displacement for your body and for your balance of strength between the quads and the posterior chain, your bar path should be perfectly vertical. All right. And you should be able to hit depth. When I say perfectly vertical, the bar is moving in a straight line. Now here I'm doing a pretty good job, but it's not perfect. And watch how the bar is going to dip as I come out of the hole, right? It goes forward and then it goes back. That's me trying to correct and to get more posterior chain in there because there I have a little bit too much forward knee displacement. Okay. So this is why it's a very important topic. It's why it's something that you need to pay attention to. It's not only going to affect your strength, it's going to affect your ability to hit depth.
I want to show you guys another example, all right, about how bar path changes as forward knee displacement changes and how that will affect your ability to hit depth. Here, I start out doing pretty good. And if you watch my bar path, it's going to be more or less vertical. But then as the set progresses, right, and I fatigue, I'm going to rely more and more on that posterior chain and my depth is going to get worse and worse and worse. So those first few reps, they're not they're not quite to competition depth, but they're pretty good. Now you can see I'm starting to fatigue. I'm starting to fall forward more. I'm not getting enough forward knee displacement. And you can see I cut that rep even higher. My hips are going further back. And it's going to be eat. Now this rep, I kind of do a little bit better. I correct a little bit, but it's still not perfect. Now, I don't want to mislead you guys into thinking that the amount of knee travel is the only factor that's going to influence strength and depth. Again, if you watch a lot of top-level lifters who sit way far back in the squat, they just have very, very dominant posterior chains, and they're able to use a lot of glute, a lot of lower back, a lot of hamstring, and so that puts them in a more advantageous position. Again, I think if you were to see some of these guys from the side, you'd see their bar path would be more or less straight, and that's where I really, really want you guys to focus. Now, a common problem for many lifters is not being able to get enough forward knee displacement, and that is going to be limited by your ankle mobility. It's also going to be limited by the strength of your quads to an extent, but for, for most people, it's more going to be limited to your ankle mobility and specifically to your ability to dorsiflex, all right? And so we're going to talk more about that in the next section, or in the next video rather, about how you can improve your dorsiflexion and how that is going to influence your ability to squat. In the meantime, if you guys have questions or comments or feedback, please post them in the comments below, and I will do my very best to address them, and I'm going to do my very best to continue to improve the video quality as we go. All right? I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. I know it's been a rough couple of weeks. Trust me, it's been very rough for me as well. Um, I've really been struggling to catch up on all of my responsibilities to my athletes, to my sponsors, to you guys, so I, I really appreciate your support. Until next time, think strong and train hard.